yesterday they asked you to sign up for an account for uh, Streamlit. Have you all signed up for an account? Should be pretty straightforward. You can use your GitHub account, so all your uh, Google account. And so today we're gonna talk about how to create an uh, interactive web app using uh, Streamlit. So originally uh, we're supposed to teach testing and continuous integration. So I will leave that to next week. Uh, because I think the web app is more interesting and you might want to use that for your final project uh, if you want to so uh, continuous uh, integration we have already been done that using GitHub Actions uh, that's actually called continuous integration so basically you let the computer to test things for you uh, but we can add some functions to test uh, the things for your package um, but it's not essential for your final project so we leave that to next week so today I'm going to cover how you can actually use Python to create those web apps uh, so that you can demonstrate some of the functions you develop for your package so they can show to other people they can just open a the URL they can go to a link they can test your stuff so that's kind of uh, the goal and again I'm here to help make sure that if you are having a question you are struggling uh, talk to me don't keep it to yourself uh, otherwise I have no idea I can only uh, based on your step assignment uh, trying to figure out whether you uh, understand the question or not but if you really need help you should talk to me okay and if you never come to class you never ask any questions and you're not doing well on lab assignment or final project there's not not much I can do okay you should seek help if you when um, needed and uh, I know some of you hate this class uh, but it doesn't have to be I mean you can talk to me I'm here to help you but you, if you if you if you never talk to me, I, I have no idea about what you are thinking. So I'm here to help. I'm just trying to teach you some techniques that might be useful for you. It might seem challenging for you, but there's a skills that can earn you some money. Okay, there's like practical skills. If you're really good at, you can find a job at big tech companies that can make several times what the professor are making at UT. Okay, that's real. There is no like. <coughs> uh, anyway, so we are gonna go through that how to create a web app, and it's up to you how you want to go for by having examples for you. So this will be the last lab assignment. I just um, send the uh, assignments um, earlier, so it should be pretty simple. So this one should not take you a long time, and then you can use the time next week and next next week to think about what you want to do for your final project and uh, since we have so many students I don't require the in-class presentation so you just need to record a video uh, 10 minutes up to 20 minutes whatever you like and then share on the github uh, the, and uh, canvas discussions so anyone can watch okay otherwise it's going to take uh, several lectures for us to actually to be able to present everyone and I the reason I want that is for you to have a video and they can introduce your package introduce your web app and it can send to anyone rather than in class just uh, to a small number of uh, people so spend your time and if you have any idea what you want to do you don't know how to do that talk to me okay um, I can give you some idea I can give you some examples uh, it should not be super typical uh, It's an opportunity for you to apply what you have learned in this class to deal with something real practical that other people can use you can use you can showcase and if you're doing uh, some capstone project or your master's degree doing your thesis this might be something that you can use to demonstrate so you can whatever data you're using you might be able to use some of the web app to demonstrate your data demonstrate your results so it's a lot of potentials okay so let's go back to uh, the topic and if you go to the resources I put some links in here interactive web app so uh, there are two packages right now that can develop interactive web app and most of the web mapping stuff online most likely you're going to find is using JavaScript or Python uh, but not everyone have their expertise or have knowledge about JavaScript and Python uh, not JavaScript and uh, HTML but if you already know Python then you can actually just use Python directly to develop interactive web app without having to know the JavaScript so think about <coughs> all the website that we are browsing um, the majority of those are using JavaScript technology um, and but 
It's also called the front end. Okay, so the website that you're seeing is a client. It's a client display um, on the screen, but behind the scene, you can use different languages. So here, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Python is so called back end. So in the back end, you can do all kinds of data processing and then just display the result on the browser. That's called front end. So um, the package we're gonna do today is called Streamlit, but there's another one called Gradio and uh, I think Streamly right now is pretty much the most popular package, uh, Python package for developing uh, interactive web app. But if you already know JavaScript or HTML, you can develop without using this. Uh, the point of using this is more flexible. You can integrate what we have learned in this class and then you can put that into practice. If you click the link, uh, the Streamly.io is pretty simple and straightforward. So you can look at uh, the demo here. It's very simple. All you need is just write a Python script and then you can turn this one into an interact web app, uh, web app and then you can continue to develop <coughs> you will refresh your web page and then you can easily deploy this one to the cloud and everything is free so you don't have to pay anything to actually to be able to hot develop and host the web app so everything will be in on github and then you will pull the stuff from the github the nice thing about this is you don't really have to maintain a server so think about that in the past if you develop a website you have something you need to have a hosting space you need to have stories to host that. You need to have a URL. You need to have a domain. Right now, everything is free. So, and also you don't need to maintain that. All you need is just update your GitHub pack, GitHub repo, and it will automatically pull the repo update to the web app. So there's zero maintainers, pretty much, and it's all free. You can do all kind of fancy stuff. There are tons of examples in there, but uh, today we want to get something very simple and show you how to uh, develop some app very very quickly or you can also clone some of the repo that i have some template and then can deploy within a couple minutes then you have a website up and running you can show to anyone then you can customize so this is uh, again it's a python package uh, now you already know how to install you know how to follow um, the base way to learn uh, all kind of python packages just to read the documentation so if the python package is very very good most likely you're going to have very good documentation so i kind of really like uh the streamly documentation you're welcome to check it out so it's interactive um and you can get started just like install uh the packages so you can install from pip uh, using pip or you can install using conda right so first uh let's show you how to actually to install it so you can open anaconda prompt or a terminal whatever you like and then conda activate uh, your conda environment then you can use um, mamba or use pip uh, so for me i can just simply use pip install stream it and then just hit enter it's automatically install the package then we can start developing i already installed yesterday so it looks uh i don't need to download anything uh it should work uh, just fine so once you have the package then we can start writing script uh, again if you want you can look at the examples uh, some of the concepts uh, in here so the nice thing about this you can use visual studio code to writing code and then just one command line you can run this uh, as a web app and then you can pull up on your browser then you can start looking at that uh, there are a lot of information this can you can spend a couple of days just to look through that uh, there are a lot of components so think about some of the things that you do for your package using ipy widget right so ipy widget you have all the components you have drop down you have button you have uh, track boxes you have all kind of stuff uh simply have the same thing so one thing you need to keep in mind is ipy leave that doesn't really work on the web so ipy leave that you always need to have a so-called back end so everything you click is going to run that function most of the web technology javascript doesn't have that functionality so if you really want to do some interactive thing, you need to use the component provided uh, by Streamlit. Um, but you can, for example, have a drop-down list. You can select and then you can send that one to your Python script. You can add the uh, map and then you can display it on the web app. Uh, I will show you later. But uh, if you click create an app, and if you scroll down something like this, right, you can see uh, Streamlit, Pandas, and then um, import the library, create this, and then you can just run the app. Uh, so it should be pretty uh, easy to get started. So once you install the package, now you can just open, for example, here, uh, anywhere on your computer. So where you want to save the script. 
Um, so I'm going to go to my downloads directory. So here, uh, for example, I have an apps, an apps folder, right? And all you need is just right click. You can open your Visual Studio Code in here. Once it's open, then you can start writing script, right? You can just create a script. Uh, here. So under your folder, just right click. Oops. And you can just click this button, new file. So choose whatever name you like. Uh, it's fine. I can just maybe app.py, whatever name you like. It doesn't really matter. And once you have this uh, file created, up a low right corner here, make sure you select the environment. Okay, see my mouse? Yes? Where do you download? Uh, I don't download anything. Just oh, okay. pip install. I, we haven't done, we don't need to download anything. Just pip install streamed it and install into your contact environment. You just made a folder? Yeah, just made a folder and then just open it. Yeah. Just uh, create an empty folder, right? Uh, apps, or whatever. And then you open in Visual Studio Code and then I create an empty script. Uh, then you can start writing. So here, uh, this is the empty, uh, just like what you traditionally uh, write script. And then if you want, you can go to see the documentation. You can copy and paste. Uh, but what we want is here is to be pretty simple. So the first thing you want to import usually is a streamlit library. So the convention would be import again. Make sure low right corner uh, bottom here the status bar select the conda environment where you have the streamlit package installed. So I click this one right, and then just type whatever name I'm uh, GOS, or you can just select from uh, the drop down list. Then that means right now we are. Uh, inside the contact environment and then just import okay stream lead it's automatically pull up uh, stream lead see it's st so this is the most common one uh, you always need to import it by using trying to develop some apps right you see it's pretty intelligent as st doc title hello world okay looks fine i just uh, auto complete done this is pretty much the get started, the hello world example using Streamlit. And then just control S. Okay. So this, right now this is the script. So there are two ways you can run. You can do it in the inside the Visual Studio code here, or you can just use the terminal. So for example, this is the script, right? I can right click and then open in terminal. And in here uh, you can just contact activate the environment, the same thing. So think about here, if your script is developed using uh, Streamlit, you can run it without any uh, ID. So you don't actually need Visual Studio Code. I can just run here, so contact activate GEOS, right? Activate the environment, then just Streamlit. It's here, EAML, yeah, EAMLIT space, run and then app.py so this is how you run a python script and then create a web app okay it's going to pop up so stream it run whatever the name the file pass of your script and then just hit enter so under the hood it's actually going to create a server uh with a web server and then it's going to automatically pop up let's open your browser see this one Can you see it? Streamlit run and then just the file name of the Python script. Yes. Okay, cool, right? So this is the simplest one. And you keep in mind, <coughs> you can display all kind of components. You can have text, you can have images, you can have video, you can have maps. Basically anything you see on the web, there's a way to put it on here. You just need to find the correct component to display it, right? Right now, it's just a simple one. And here, you can continue to write this one. I can add another line, for example, ST, okay, okay, fine. Here are some of the first attempt to use data to create a table. Let me enter another one. Okay, data frame. <coughs> you don't show anything, I was just... So, the common function is ST, write. HT to write basically can write anything. Uh, it's pretty intelligent. You can figure out where it's text, images, HTML, uh, but you can just write a text or you can just HT to 
is the dot right once you type dot it should auto uh have the drop down list right just type dot and you see there are a bunch of uh types in here uh you're welcome to try right now for example i think they have uh button checkbox columns container uh select markdown select box something like that select box basically is the drop down list in ipad widget uh, it's not called drop down it's called select box i will show examples later uh, but anyway so for example let's say i just uh, create another link uh, another line here st to right and then control s control s if you come back to the website uh, the web page in here upper right corner here once you control save that means it changed the source code once the source code is changed, the web page will refresh. So up right here, can you see these three buttons? And usually you want to click the one that says always uh, read one. That means anytime you make changes to your script, it's going to pull the new one and then automatically refresh, right? So I can write this one, ref uh, auto refresh. See that? It comes up, right? And I can continue to write. I can write another one. So st doc, uh right or st doc text you can also do markdown if you want so i can uh just st text and then say this is some text whatever right oops and then control s again so this time i don't need to refresh again it's automatic so again come here maybe let me pull my uh web page on the uh my stop on the left and then show my web page on the right so that you can see is being refreshed in real time, right? Oops, why did I click this one? So here, on the left, right? I have this script, you can see the uh, white dot there. It's not saved yet. So right now, if I just control S, and you should see on the right, it's being refreshed. So control S. Okay, do you have control S? You see, on the right, it's refreshed. So as simple as that, uh, it's very flexible, very easy to use. Uh, it's a very uh, nice Python package that can help you turn your script into a Python, uh, into an interactive web app. Again, you're welcome to go to the uh, documentation. There are tons of examples in here. You can pretty much use any Python package. Uh, once you finish your processing, your result will be somehow written as some kind, some form of text, images, video, uh, table whatever then you can display it on the web app so the ideal thing would be the allow the user to do a bunch of things and then you just render the results okay so if you want you can uh, go ahead and read the documentation but you can scroll down all the all the way to the end uh, there's a complete example here right this one is the complete example using uh, streamlit and it's also using i think using a uh, uh, pictogram does it use pytech or something so what you, what you need to do, you can just simply upper right corner here, just copy this one. And then, so you're gonna try it out, just, I can just control V, all right, see if it works. If all the dependencies are already there, it should work just fine, so, and then, just control S. Again, let me open this one here, see if it works, okay. Control S. And hopefully you refresh on the right okay uber pickups in nyc and it's going to download the data so the data is available through this one see really nice there's uh, not really much thing you can do you can uh, just learn from examples and let me maximize right pick up hours right see the raw data you can show the table you can there's a uh, if you hover your mouse there's like a double arrow right this one if you click it's going to show you the entire table so think about if you have some data you want to show on the web you can have a check box right click this one and show this this all the things that we're doing here you can do the same thing using ipad widget but ipad widget only runs on the notebook instance it's not really a web page so you cannot really share this with someone else they will need if they want to run your notebook they will need to install all the dependencies but in this case Later, I'm going to show you how to publish the app. So anyone can go online and then just go to the URL. They should be able to run this one, right? So you can check that one. They can double click. Oh, there's also a map, right? How nice, right? Interactive. 
you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can full screen, right? You have all the points. You can have a histogram. You can also make changes, for example, interactive. So everything we have changing here, the map is being updated in real time. So whatever thing that changed behind the scene, you just think about the iPad widget that we cover last time, right? So I click the drop down list, I select the base map, and it runs something, and then it displays the map. So basically like a sequence. Under the hood, this is the same, pretty much the same technology, but just different mechanism. Uh, but it allows you to change the slider, right? I can change the slider, you can see the pickup hours, like midnight, and then morning, afternoon, the daily, right? It can zoom in, it's actually pretty cool, right? If you look at the source code, it's not, not that complicated. So there's uh, 36 lines uh, plus all the empty lines, probably less than 30 lines, okay? So here, this is the data. So basically you have a CSV file or something, and then with all the, <coughs> excuse me, all the pickups, you have to name the column uh, showing the time. And then you can design the function to load the data, so use the pandas to read the CSV, and then to construct the data written in a format that's uh, being used by your data. And then you can see ST.txt, right? <coughs> Let me move this one to the left so that I can explain to you uh, what this is really doing, right? So here, ST.title, right? Is this one, this is the title. And then this is behind the scene. You read the data, you load the data. And then another one here, ST.txt. Loading the data. So when you first show it up, it's going to load the data. And then it's going to show the text, right? Once the data is done, it's just going to you uh using ST.cache data. So this is what is showing up in here. And then checkbox, right? ST.checkbox. Show the data, right? This is show the data. So if you click in, it becomes true. If you unclick, uncheck, it becomes false. So if something talk checkbox. So this exactly is just like IPy widget. If you select the drop down list, base map doc value, right? Trap box doc value. This is you don't need the value, it's just the name of that uh component. It's going to treat it as a value. So if you check that, it's going to be true. If it's true, I'm going to add a sub header. I'm going to write some data. So take a look at this one, right? If I click, it execute this call. So this app, think about, is an interactive web app. Whatever things you change, it will run the script from the beginning to the end. It's unlike iPad which it only runs that function. This is from the beginning to the end. So that's why. But what they has a state. So back here, it can capture what you select, what the user intent. So if I select, uncheck this one, it's gone. Check this one. But under the hood, you rerun the script entirely from the beginning to the end. And you can have a header, you can have a filter. Right? These are a little bit more complicated. And also last one here has the map, right? So once you filter the data, uh, if it is a data frame, you can use that to create a map because it has a location uh, about um, each pickup um, uh, point. So think about this, right? It's like it's only 30 lines of code, but you can create something that can be easily used by anyone uh, if you want to. And so maybe next, let me show you how actually you, how you actually publish this, publish this one. So what you need to do is to go to your GitHub repo. So open your GitHub account. And I'm just going to show you how easy it is to just publish this one as an interact web app. So create a new repo. Uh, click new and then uh, on your user so here uh, repo name whatever name you like okay um, but it's <coughs> it's better to have something descriptive so I can say uh, stream lead oh demo already exists I stream it uh, add demo whatever name you like okay and
if you want you can uh, i think it's easier for you maybe to yeah create a readme file let's find and pretty much you can set default i can set the mit license here mit okay are we good so just create the repo and then put it to your uh, local to your computer and then just copy and paste the uh, python script to the repo and then just push then we can uh, publish this one so okay create a repository <laughs> All done. Right now it's empty, nice and there. So click the green um, button. And then I can come back to my downloads directory. Okay. Open the terminal. Just clone the repository to your computer. So git clone paste. Enter. Alright. So now we have this one on a computer. So next, you can just, for example, if you just start from scratch, you can just create a script and then just do whatever we did earlier. But to save some time, I'm just going to copy the script that we created earlier, app.py, come back here, just paste it, and done. Then, then just commit the changes, push this one back to GitHub. Then your script should show up on your GitHub. So I'm going to open this one using my uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay, and you should uh, on the left side here. If you see the uh, the gig icon, it should detect the changes. Right, app dot py. So it should be there. I can just say um, add web app script something like that. Then just control enter to push the changes to GitHub. Sync changes. Once it's done, it, the script should show up on your GitHub account. Okay, here, refresh. Boom, see it now. If you click, you should see the script exactly uh, on here. Are we good? So these are all the basic steps, right? Now you should be pretty familiar with GitHub, how to pull, uh, clone the repo, how to make changes, and then commit the changes, push back to GitHub. So. Um, you should have done this so many times, right? Once you have this, the next step is to link, to create an app and then link to this repo. So uh, next, hover over to uh, streamlit.io and then upper right corner here should be sign in, right? You can sign in. You, if you already log into your GitHub account, it's automatically sign in using your GitHub account. Uh, if this is the first time, you might need to uh, click some buttons to accept that. And it might take some time for you to uh, sort up all your projects. So it's called share.streamlit.io. And from there, then we can create uh, the project. Okay, you see, it's done. Uh, I have so many projects in here. It's all free resources. So you can create as many apps as you like. Um, it can be public. I think you can also create uh, three, up to three private projects. So if you don't want your source code to be sold to other people, uh, to or to the public, you can create private projects. So here, upper right corner, see the button, new apps, okay? Yes? Are we here? Not yet? Can you click uh, click the button, new app, on the uh, Streamlit uh, website? Are you with me on this step? Yes? Right, and then from here, repo, if you just uh, click uh, under this uh, 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 select box here, it should show up your repo. So the, the one you just updated, you should be able to select from here. Right. Alternatively, you can also paste the URL. So you can uh, paste URL, and then, let me show you how much it's probably easier. So you go to your GitHub uh, account under repo, Click this app.py, okay? So this is the file that is going to create uh, the web app. Yes? Yes? What do you mean? Like I close my 
So you, uh, you need to find the delete it, or what do you want to? No, I'm using it. In no, no, don't, don't, don't oh. move the folder. Just go in, just copy the script. Uh, no, no, go into the folder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just copy the Python script. Yeah, just copy this one to your repo. Okay. You don't need the directory. So earlier I saw you like, in the create a new repo, and then it's empty. You just need a Python script. You don't need the folder from your previous project. So here, this should be what it looks like on your repo. So earlier, right, we create another one here, and then there's a Python script in here. Uh -huh. All I need is just copy this one, that's it. And then paste into your repo. Uh, if you want to follow, that's fine, but you don't need that. So for now, you just... So your repo should look like something like this. It's an empty repo with the a Python script. And then within there, you can just write whatever. You can copy the text that I showed you earlier. Right, so this what this what it looks like here. All right, so we actually have just a Python script, something like this. Okay, any other questions? Have you finished this step? Okay, if you have questions, ask. Okay, don't uh, be so quiet. You never ask questions. Anyway, so once you have this. Now we are on this web page, right? So the easiest thing would be just go into the whatever Python script or the URL and then go to the, um, the browser URL here. Just copy this one. So again, I'm going here. You can just copy this and then come back to the uh, streamlit, right? So earlier when you create a new app, let me show you one more time. New app. And then again, you are, if your repo is pretty, you just updated, you should click here. You should just you can just select this one. It's up to you. But for me, usually I just paste the GitHub URL, and then we see here Control V. That's it. So this is the app.py. This is the Python script where we want to use to create a web app. So this is we basically the landing page to your website, and then under here advanced settings. Usually this you don't really need to do anything. So you can select the Python version. We're going to use the default Python 3.9. And these are all the environment variables. Uh, for now, you can just set it as, and you don't need to change it. Um, if you want to, if you have some API keys or token, just like we, uh, if you remember GitHub, right? The PyPI username, PyPI password. So those are called the environment variables. Sometimes you don't want to hard code your sensitive information in your web app, but you can put it as an environment variable in here. So when user go to your stuff, it basically link to your credential, but your credential is not exposed to the internet. So this is more like private information here. You don't need to change it, but all you need is just copy this one and then paste, just deploy, and then just wait to see uh, the web app. So you see, it's automatically generate a URL, <coughs> your username, <coughs> and then your GitHub repo name, then it's going to be a random string, app hyphen, something like that. Doc string dot app. We can change the URL later, but for now, this is what it looks like. Should be pretty simple and straightforward. Low right corner here, you should see the button uh, manage app. So this one shows you what right now it is doing. So think about this is like a server. Right now it's creating a server for you to run your app. And it might take some time. Oh, perfect. You see how quick it is. And I can minimize that. See that? Done. How long does it take for you to start from scratch, create the repo, and then run the script, and then push this to here? Three minutes, probably. Right? Blah, blah, blah. Create repo, and then copy the script, and then app.py, paste it, commit changes, and then just. Uh, uh, create a new app on uh, Streamlit, deploy, done. Yes? Um, so I'm going to deploy an app, main file path. Uh -huh. It doesn't want the whole thing right Yeah, you, you, you want the, so here, if you go to your uh, uh, GitHub repo, you should go to the whatever doc .py file. Once you click, and then just copy that URL. Okay. So how many of you have a web app running? Raise your hand. Okay, Tracy. What else? Okay, Changwa, only two? What does it mean? So you go to your uh, repo, yeah. app.py, yeah. 
copy the URL yeah. and then go to your streamly account yeah. and then just new app let me do it one more time here Uh, this one is pretty slow okay new app and then paste github url can you do that yeah and then paste the url oh. then just deploy you should automatically create questions okay. and this is how simple it is to turn your python script into a web app and you see it's up and running if I send this URL to anyone, they should be able to visualize to open it. So for example, you can copy the URL and then just open in a new incognito window. Just paste it. It might take some time to load, but it usually it should be only a couple of seconds because it's actually creating another uh, new instance. And then sometimes the server is down, then there's not really much you can do. Um, okay, it's, it's, it's quite slow right now, but uh, let's wait for, is it my internet problem? So next, let me show you how you can actually uh, change the URL. So for now, as I said, it's a pretty long URL. Uh, it's not very user friendly. Okay, so you can come back to here, go back to your web app right now. You should see the one that uh, you just deploy. You probably only have one. So let me see my demo. Uh, yeah, this one here, app talk demo. Uh, on the right here three dot uh, click that and then settings see that so the three dot and then settings so this is where you can change your url you can choose whatever name you like <coughs> as long as the name is not reserved or being taken so i'm going to maybe uh st app demo and then just uh, okay, it's taken. I cannot take it. Somebody already took the good name, so maybe uh, five ten demo. I believe this is not taken. Oh, so you cannot start with a UI um, uh, 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 number. So demo app. Okay, you see whatever name is already taken. App fancy I am, I'm what so maybe st uh, hello app oh it only allows whatever st hello okay this one works okay don't do it okay let me save first so that it's not taken okay it's mine now it's mine you cannot take it okay so here, let me go to the app again. You see, it's mine, and now I can click. I can click the uh, app. See, ht dash hello swim little app. Go type on your browser, and then see if you can access my uh, my app. So ht uh, dash hello dot swim dot app, and see if you can access it. Yes, perfect, right? You see, it's up and running within less than five minutes. So if you want to do it very quickly, like I can run down again, create a repo, create a script. You can copy the script with all, all kind of examples, and then uh, just push the changes to GitHub. Then create a new app, uh, paste the URL to your main the U, uh, app .py, and then just change the uh, the URL if you want to. And then this time, pretty much, this is how to create. Of course, there's a lot of things you can do here. If you go to the documentation, right, web app. So on the left side, there's a tab here, API Ravens. So this one shows you all kind of components, um, <coughs> text, select box, uh, images, uh, chart. Did you see? It's, it's, it's all kind of fancy stuff in here. So if you want, you can click, for example, maps or map public. Uh, or some simple chart. So for example, if I click this one, and the nice thing about this is at the bottom here, 
it has some example so you can just copy and paste the example to your script so all you need to do maybe just see like this create a new script or you can just paste into an existing script it's going to create a page like uh in sequence and we scroll down uh you can also have a uh, median uh media for example images video so if i click the video so this is the script you see you can does it have sound or something right. very simple and easy to use import streamlit as st and then video files my video dot mp4 uh and then the rb uh, video uh type file to read so how about this let me show you this in action how about uh let me see if there has any audio here uh because this one is on their local computer so i'm going to make use the image so uh, i want to add an image to to the website that i just created right and i can show you easily how you can just <coughs> excuse me just update the repo you don't need to maintain the you don't need to go to the stream to idle to make changes so here look at this one right uh stream to image and then uh image to open and then blah 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 image something like this so what we can do i can just simply copy this a few lines maybe just copy the first line first okay copy here uh first let's look at what the app looks like right now so it looks like here you have a map so let's say i can have another one at the bottom here i want to add an image at the bottom okay so what i can do uh go to the web app here and right pretty much these are all the previous one so what we want to do is to just paste the the first link right import pil as image so this is uh the one that we uh use to create the image so next so again open the example again just copy it so here again is under the api reference uh med media element and then ht talk image so what we need to do <coughs> pretty much it's just these two lines right so image to open uh sunrise i believe you can just ac to image and then just paste the url it should work as well um in this in that case i we don't need the import the library so this one is just for the local uh image on the local computer so we can just copy this line okay and then come back to here to the last line just simply just paste so what we want to do here is to change the URL. So here you can find any images on the internet. Um, I can just Google it. Maybe funny GIF. Is it real funny? So images and how about this? Okay, looks cool. So I'm gonna open this one okay just right click uh you can you can uh, you can use any so i'm gonna right click copy image url or address and then just open it make sure that the image is accessible so this is the direct link to this one right so cool right i have an iphone and then what we need to do <laughs> come back to here and then just replace st to image uh single quote or double quote paste you don't need a caption if you don't want to i can just simply remove it i believe this, this should work just fine see here ht to image and then just paste the url that's it it should show up so control s again now we can test it locally if you want before you push to github but uh again select the interpreter gos right and once you have this so earlier i saw you use the terminal to run the app but you should also be able to use that directly within uh, Visual Studio Code. So if you click this here, lower left corner, and then click the plus sign, uh, exclamation, something like that, it should come up. So here, just click the uh, terminal, right? And then from here, I can run the same thing, okay? I can uh, make sure you conda, conda activate your conda environment, and then I can just stream it, run, okay the same thing app.py hit enter it's also create the um uh, run it web app so here this is what it looks like it should come up in a second 
loading the data and then so at the bottom we just add a new uh, gf animation right so let's take a look okay one two three surprise you see it's it's there uh, isn't it fun you can add Im images video all kind of stuff so it, now i say okay it works fine on my uh computer then all you need to do go to your repo and then just commit the changes see what happens okay uh again let me show you what the app looks like so right now right um where is it yeah so right now this is what the app looks like uh, I haven't pushed it yet, but I just want to show you what's the mechanism. So if you click uh, low right corner here, see this is the logs. So basically when the app was created, and after I push the changes to GitHub, you will see this one is being updated. So basically Streamly is monitoring your repo. Anytime when you make changes to repo, it's going to grab the changes and then update the app. So now let's see here. <coughs> Just commit whatever you change. So I said, add, add it, uh, GIF, and then control enter, sync changes. Now come back to my app here. Wait for the low right corner. Wait for it to update it. It should be pretty. Uh, it should only be a couple seconds. You see? Take a look at it. It's updating. Oh, it's done. It, boom five seconds your app is updated so in this way you don't really have to maintain whatever things you want on the app it's fully automated so you can focus on the development of your package and again it's up to your imagination what you want to do but this is a pretty simple basic one uh, nothing fancy yet but you can create some cool stuff right now is basically everything on the center but you can design menus you can design all kind of uh, uh, items on your website if you want to so okay so this is the basic next let me show you something that you can do more like geospatial stuff uh, I created some template uh, makes it easy for you to create that so if you go back to the <coughs> excuse me um, to the website and I saw a hacking face um, we can talk about that next time but what I want you to click on is this one stream the template for uh, Geospatial. So if you open this one, and this is the template uh, with all kind of geospatial applications. It's a bit more complicated than what we have earlier. We only have a app.py, but here I have a folder called Pages, and within there I have multiple apps. But first, uh, let me show you what it looks like. So you can go to the repo, uh, upper right corner there. There should be a URL. So geo template .app. I can open it and hopefully it works okay see that does it work for you and right this is more like a, a polish website so I can have the menu on the left side uh, I can have logos and with text in here I can have some map interactive so this is our favorite like folium library okay so you can do the same thing for your package if you want uh, you can zoom in you can zoom out you can turn the layer on and off you can have hyperlinks, you can have text. So these are all using um, Markdown. You already know Markdown, right? It's the same thing in here. And on the left side, interactive map. And look at this. I can select all kind of base map. I can select satellite, select terrain. And remember this one for lab, line, lab nine, right? Using iPad widget, you can do the same thing using Streamly. Again, I'll show you how to look at the source code, but at least you can look at like some of the things, what kind of things it can do. For example, uh, library maps in here. So there are tons of layers. So for uh, for lab 10, pretty much like this. You can just fork my repo and deploy it and just add a couple lines to add another option, allow user to enter the URL and then just deploy the map of the uh, URL. So here, I can select from the drop down list, right? How about the user just want to paste the URL of the base map and then you can also display that. So if you go to the left side here, there are a couple more options. Split map, right? You can use the slider, slip, uh, slide left and right, right? So if you have some data layer you want to show uh, to the user, 
this might be useful. Uh, it might take some time to load up, but once it's loaded, you can have a laser, you can have a map, right? Pretty cool, right? And this only like a couple lines of code. It's super easy. Uh, mark a cluster. If you have a lot of points, uh, GPS or whatever points, you can display it on the map, right? And then you can hover your mouse. I can click it to see the information. Uh, you can also have a laser here at the lower right corner. And uh, heat maps, for example. Again, everything that I display here behind the scenes is using Python script. So when I change something, it runs the script again and then display what you want, right? So this is the heat map, for example, based on the uh, cities, population. Uh, you can also have base map. So I also have, an, for example, again, embed YouTube tutorial uh, video here. Right? This one here behind the scene is a. Uh, uh, animation right the gf and uh, gif animation uh, you can have text you can have hyperlinks and here i can search for example anything so i can search for example esri just hit enter then here it can show you all kind of uh, available images so i can maybe select how about this um esri uh, national geographic see and how about the other one? Okay. Okay, uncheck it. Here we go. So this makes you think your app really interactive. They allow users to uh, search, create stuff. I can also use this one, search quick map services. Uh, that one it even has more options. So I can search, for example, Google. And then from here, uh, terrain. Does it have Google base map here? Yeah, it might have been uh, removed. It's not here anymore. Train. Yeah, some of the base map. Oh, it works, but it's just not a complete map. It's just a tiny one. Anyway, and the last one here, web map service. So this is more like something I want for your lab 10. So user can, for example, paste the URL. So this one is called uh, WMS. Uh, but for the lab assignment, it's called XYZ. So basically, uh, the the package that you develop, you already have the app base map function, right? Load the URL. So I want you to develop something that have a uh, box here. You can paste the, for example, Google map, whatever, and then enter, then you should display the map. So this one is using the uh, WNS. It's, it's a bit different, but you don't have to do this. But but I think the functionality is the same, right? I want you to have a check, uh, something like this, and then paste the Google sector, et cetera, URL, whatever URL you like, paste, Enter and then it should display the map, right? Uh, you can also select from drop down this. So this is the only um, minor modification that you need to do uh, for your app. app uh, for your app, uh, we look into the source code uh, shortly. But again, this is exactly uh, some of the things you can do for geospatial applications. Uh, of course, there are more complicated one if you want to. So if you click the last one here, streamed it, uh, time lapse web app, okay. So this one behind the scenes is using Google Sending, uh, but I deployed it on uh, Hacking Face. It's kind of similar, Hacking Face UK is also free. You can also deploy your streamed uh, web app if you want to. Uh, if we have time, we'll show it next time. But for now, I just want to show you, for example, uh, this is behind the scenes using streamed it, okay? But it has a more complicated, it has a lot more functionality, uh, computation. If you want, you can try it out. So uh, this took me several weeks uh, to develop but here for example US housing right I can visualize housing data vector data raster data uh, you can do it in 2d you can do it in 3d so there are a lot of things you can do right so again uh, so in 3d right and then you can use uh, use your control and then hover your mouse you should be able to see something like this and I can make changes I can change the color if you want I can it's it's all interactive, so it's being changed in real time. It's being run again, so you see, I I can easily do that. And this would be key, could be very useful if you have some data you want to visualize, but uh, the audience does not have software, right? In this case, you just send the URL. They will be able to look at that and pretty easy and simple, straightforward. Okay, so uh, next, let me show you how you can do that like, easily. So if you just want to use this template, Fine. All you need to do is just uh, click here, 
fork and then just fork this one to your computer uh, to your account then you should have the URL to your to repo and then you can do the same thing just create a new app on Streamlit and just paste the URL to your repo so here under this repo we have couple uh, Python script here usually you want to use the uh, just the home to, uh, home to py so this is the landing page and then within there we also have a folder called pages so Streamlit is pretty nice it can create so called uh, multi-page web app so you have a landing page and then all your apps within the uh, pages folder is going to create as a menu so let me show you one more time right I mean click this one here uh, just to show you what it looks like so on the left side here you see the menu right uh, you should see all these uh, item in here is actually just a, a file name so if you go to the pages and then so here I use one underscore and then have an emoji and then the file name this is exactly what's going to show up on your web app okay so on the left side here the first one is home so this is just the home page and then it's going to read the file just the file name and then if you have emoji it's going to have an emoji in here but it, repl it did all the uh, underscore and spaces something like that so you see here oh no space uh, underscore all right so this is why it's showing up here it's automatic so um, I will show you uh, later how you actually can do that on your uh, machine so again all you need to do is just to uh, fork uh, the repo and then you just go to a stream it again just do the same thing so stream it uh, sweep <coughs> so assume this is the repo that you are uh, uh, have on your com uh, account then I can just go to the click the home.py then just select this one copy and paste copy and then new app okay paste the github url and then just paste it then just deploy uh, that's it then you should have the app i've been running using my template uh, then you can continue to make changes to your uh, web app okay so this is how uh, easy it is next let me show you how you can create uh, if you want to create from scratch uh, you can go to the streamlit.io and then documentation get started there should be on the left side there's one called uh, multi-page apps in here if you want you can um, read the documentation so this is basically the structure uh, what it looks like you're going to have a pages directory and then under there you can have the name for example about.py and then to so if you want to by sequence otherwise it's going to be based on the file uh, alphabetically but if you want to the menu at a certain sequence you can have something like this so and then it's going to show up like this so next let's give it a try see if it works right um, where's the <coughs> I mean here so again I'm going to go back to my web app here right the uh, the previous one not the one you uh, fork for my repo I mean the one from the uh, previous one so here we have the app.py right all you need to do is just right click here and then new folder then just create a name called pages so don't use other name it needs to be pages otherwise it won't work okay so the empty folder pages are you done and then from here right click create a new file so this is what going to show up on the menu, uh, the sub menus on your web. So I can new file, I can have one maybe called about .py, right? And then within there, you can do the same thing. You can just import Streamlit and you can do all kinds of things. So I'm going to import uh, Streamlit as st, and then st dot maybe title about st dot right. Uh, you can write any text you like so basically it will be a new web page so when user click that menu it's going to navigate to this one so here yeah, this is my personal information okay control s pretty much this time and then uh, streamlit takes of the rest 
So here I can just uh, I can open the web app again. So hopefully it works. Uh, you have the main the main page is still this one. So now on the left side, can you see this one? On the left sidebar, you wanna have a menu. See that app about. So the about is the one that we just created, right? Like the app. So here, if you want to like the app, you want to change the name. You want to you don't want to see the app. You you want the home or something. Then you change your file name. So here, you want to change the name to home dot py. It's basically all the menu use the name, the file name, uh, something like this. <coughs> so now you have one app in here. You can continue to add as many as you like. So for the second one, I will maybe create something, uh, the file name a little bit better. So again, I'm going to. Yes. Uh, if we fork your repository <coughs> for that mm -hmm. template, we need to get no you don't need to clone you can deploy directly unless you want to make changes so you can just clone app and uh, fork the repo and then go to stream to io create a new app and then point to your uil that's work fine but if you want to make changes you should clone that to your computer clone your repo not my repo once it's forked to your account it becomes your repo so now uh, this should have one right so the next one we can add something like some emoji if you like um, what you can do is to go to my repo here. Uh, there should be the URL uh, instructions, and then find your favorite emojis, and <coughs> you're going to go to the web page, right? So here, I can copy any emoji they like. Uh, how about the rocket, travel, and places? Uh, okay, person. Rolling boat, okay, looks fine. Here, there's a copy icon in here. So copy, you can not only display emoji on the file name, you can also deploy an emoji in the web page. So find whatever you like, copy. Now come back to the web app here. I can create another one if I want. So I can create a new file. Let's say, uh, what, what do I want to do this one? Uh, maybe, you can just uh, maybe have a name go two underscore. So basically, what you want to show up on the menu, if you want to do it by sequence, you put me to create a name uh, one two three four something, and then I can paste the emoji here. Set, and then here I can another underscore, and I can have the other one. So maybe application whatever. Okay, application. Dog py right so now we have this one here if you go to your app it should be right now refresh it's not <coughs> eh? why oh, it's not showing up uh, may uh, maybe let's uh, add something so I can see uh, import in, uh, import stream is st and then st to write uh, title uh, I can just place an emoji here it should be fine as well so st to write can write anything so you can put anything on the web page or I can control like rolling multiple times control s and uh, for multi-page app sometimes you might need to I think uh, re re refresh or relaunch so here let me do this one control c uh, go to your web app. Yeah, I think it's uh, frozen. Yeah. It's not responding. Let me see if it works. If it doesn't, you can just uh, uh, close the. Uh okay, it's, it's stopped, already stopped. So now I can run again. Streamly dot one dot app dot py it should now it should work I think on the left still no oh sorry because the uh 
the file that I created is not under the pages directory, it's actually outside. So you need to move it inside, otherwise it's not going to show up. So I need to move it into the pages. Move. Now it becomes here, about, and then two applications. So if I come back to here, see that? Applications, I clicked it. Wow, that's how cool is that? Right, you can add as many pages as you like, like about. Uh, you probably want to be consistent. So here, if you really don't, for example, you don't want the apps like showing up in here, you can change it. So again, I can come back to my repo, uh, Control C to stop running, and then uh, change the name. So I'm gonna change it to maybe home or something. Home dot py. Okay. And then stream dot run. So in this case here, you need to be home.py rather than app.py because the file doesn't exist anymore, right? And then run again. If you make changes, you push to your GitHub. If you change the landing page, the file name, you need to redeploy the app. Otherwise, it won't work because earlier you paste the URL, it's app.py at the end. Now it's gone, so it's no longer available. So if you change your landing page, you need to redo it. But if you just change your uh, apps under the uh, pages directory, you don't have to. So the landing page, the file name, usually you don't want to change it. But now you see here, right, applications, and you can add as many as you like. Uh, if you want some emoji on the uh, menu, then you add the file name. They have some emoji in there. So I can create another one, for example here, uh, about the new file and I can go back to here find another find another emoji for example this one people okay whining face copy and then come back to here right click again right click on the pages directory uh, new file and then so the next one here right oh it's two now i can have three uh paste the emoji then i can say con contact dot py right ask people to contact you right now it's nothing there control s come back to the web app see instant but it's nothing it's empty because i haven't added anything in there so you can add any text you can add whatever you want but this is how simple it is to <coughs> create a web app right and the general structure is you just create an empty repo and then just add your landing page the file name home.py whatever your name you like and then if you want a multi-page web app you can have uh, the pages directory within there you can add as many sub uh, apps as you like so this is exactly what um, <coughs> it looks like here uh, you can have different menu, you can different stuff. So for lab uh, 10, you can just use, you can just use one, one landing page, one app, that's fine. And you want to have something similar to this one. On the right side, you want to have a drop down list. And probably you can add another box here, a uh, select box, all the uh, uh, text that allow user to enter. Uh, I think it's called input. So look at this example. So you want to add something like this user can paste, enter, and then you can add the base map. So here you can just use leaf map. Uh, if you want to, you can use your package, but you need to add function to convert this one uh, to that. So let me quickly show you what the source code uh, looks like if you want to display the map. So if I go to my repo here, right, and pages. So the first one is called interactive uh, app. And look at this one, it's not, it's not complicated. Import the leaf map, uh, folio map. You can create the images, title, stuff. Essentially, this is what it looks like, how you can display the map uh, on there. So here, let me zoom in a little bit. This last line here uh, should be pretty simple and straightforward, right? I create the map, uh, import the library, and then m equal to leaf map dot map, right? Uh, these are all the familiar stuff, right? You set the control, you can you can leave it as default. Just leave map dot map parentheses, and then if you want, you can add any base map, right? Add dot base map. So this base map comes from the checkbox, a uh, select box, right? Come from what the user select. 
So I designed the select box and then select from base map, I provide the options uh, and then you can, uh, uh, whatever the index, this is the default. So basically what the user select from the drop down list, you want to grab that value. So that value, just like in your lab uh, 9, the base method value is the same thing, but you don't need the talk value. It's just like in here. And then it's just passing this value that you select into this add doc um, base map. And then the last step is to use um, map doc to streamlit. So if you really want to, uh, I was, uh, you can use the leaf map or if you want to use your own package. So for example, your, they say, uh, what is the name of your package doc map? And then you can, you already have the base map function, right? You already developed that. And all you need is just this new function, doc to streamlit. So essentially, you just convert it into an HTML and then turn the HTML into a display on the streamlit. It might take some time, but if you want, you, want, you can look at the source code of the leaf map source code. So let me quickly show here uh, leaf map. And then you go to API, folio maps. Uh, it's so slow. So here you can go down. You should be able to see uh, to streamlit, right? And you can scroll down here to see the source code. See how this is being done, right? So all you need to do basically you want to copy this uh, into your package as a function of your map class. Then you can use your package if you want, right? But you can use div map. Uh, everything is already done. So this is basically just uh, import a. Uh, return this one as HTML and then just use stream it to display that. Um, so under the hood, basically we create a map and then we add something. Last step is to turn this map into HTML and then stream it going to display this HTML on the on the web app. So that's why it becomes interactive because it's an uh, HTML or map. Again, just look at the examples. Uh, most of those are pretty uh, straightforward. It's not like uh, many, many lines. Most of those are just like uh, boilerplate. So for example, web based services, uh, this one is a little bit more, right? So you can create, for example, a, a select box, or you can also select a, a XT doc, a ST doc text input. So the text input basically allows user to enter something. And then you grab the input, right? So the URL, then from here, if the URL is not empty, I'm going to do something. So I can add the tile layer, right? You have already have the app map to add tile layer for your uh, package. Then you just add that one to the map. Again, uh, there are tons of examples in there. If you have any questions, uh, talk to me or email to the group. Okay. So hopefully, it should not spend you more than half an hour for lab 10. It should be pretty straightforward. Fork the repo, add a couple lines. Boom, your app should be up and running. So uh, you just need to submit your the link to your repo and the link to the web app. Uh, that's it. So hopefully this gives you some idea. Uh, if you want to use this for a final project, uh, you should have the basics. Uh, next week we can cover more advanced topic. Uh, but for now, I think this should be sufficient. Uh, if you can utilize that, you develop a package, you can publish that in the web app and then anyone can go to the web app to visualize the data. Uh, that would be cool, right? So in that way, it's not just you using your stuff. You can make available to uh, anyone. Okay, so that's all for uh, today. I will see you uh, next week.